Well, here we are again, ready for our next adventure. Um, and I'm not entirely sure what I want to do next, but I'm getting kind of sick and tired of just being here. So I think it's time we grab all our stuff and head outdoors. But before I do that, I just gotta make sure we have all the necessities in here. Yep. I think one can of off should be good enough. Well, I think I got everything I need. I got my bag, I got my shirt again, my hat again. Yep, let's head on out and see what the world has for us. And so what can Pikmin do? Pikmin can do a lot of things. They can attack an enemy, take the enemy's corpse, and bring it back to the I need to harvest more Pikmin. It's like a regeneration type of thing, but Pikminized. And Pikmin are just fun and adorable creatures. They're to help Captain Olimar and other space cadets in their, on their journeys in strange and foreign planets. And that's why I adore the Pikmin. They can do pretty much anything. The entire world is built around their ability to survive and adapt. My first experience playing Pikmin was back when I was a kid. I remember going to Blockbuster and my family had this Blockbuster Game Pass type of thing where you get to rent a game, one game at a time for a month for things like 10 or $12 a month. And it was a great deal, especially since that was the culture of video game buying as a kid and back then. We really didn't buy games, we just kind of rented them for a time and if we really enjoyed it, then we get it for Christmas. And I remember picking up Pikmin. I don't remember why, but I think the cover mesmerized me. You kind of see the bulb orb, you see Captain Olimar with the Pikmin getting ready to launch them. I was like, this looks interesting. So I picked it up, got back home, put the game into my GameCube, and I had no idea what I was doing. I started playing it, and I could just not figure out what I was doing. And I would play it, and I would hit the start button, and then go down to go to sunset, and just keep on doing that until I finished it. And next thing I know, Olimar turns into a Pikmin and is stuck on the planet. And I was like, what kind of game is this? It wasn't until Pikmin 3 on the Wii U that I finally got into Pikmin. Pikmin 3 on the Wii U is one of the few games I was looking forward to playing on the Wii U, and I think, and I believe really captured the essence of what it meant to be a game on the Wii U. To have the capabilities of both the Wii Remote, the Nunchuck, and the Wii U gamepad. And I'm sad that Pikmin 3 Deluxe loses a lot of the functionality that Pikmin 3 had because the Nintendo Switch doesn't have an additional gamepad support. And for example, on Pikmin 3 for the Wii U, the Wii U gamepad would have the map, and then you could drag any of the three characters with a group of Pikmin to a specific site. And when you finally reach there, you can tell them, okay, go ahead and do this task. Pikmin 3 Deluxe has something similar. You have to pause the game, and then you have to manually map it over instead of using a stylus. It's a little nitpicky that now I have to fully pause the game and then use a cursor to and move one of the characters over to a specific spot with the Pikmin. But I feel like the Wii U did it better just because I could pick up the gamepad, pick up the stylus, and just drag them over and not think about it for a little bit again. And Pikmin 2. Pikmin 2 I've never played until I started working on this video. So it was kind of nice to play that one. I'm really excited for Pikmin 4, especially being able to play in the nighttime. We get a dog, and it looks like throughout the course of the game, we get different upgrades to help us navigate the world and collect more objects as we need. Pikmin continues to be the real-time strategy game I enjoy the most. Another real-time strategy game I really enjoy is Age of Empires 2 and Age of Empires 4. Those games I play a lot with my brothers. If you're watching this, you're probably wondering, what does Pikmin have to do anything with economics? And that is a very good question. We'll be exploring that together. Pikmin's main gameplay loop is gathering the Pikmin, building up that specific Pikmin type, and then letting them divide and conquer the land everywhere. The idea of taking and building up a team and having them do different tasks is very similar to ideas brought by Adam Smith and Plato. Yeah, both of them talked about the diversification and specialization of labor. Okay, so we finally made it out to my car and ready to head off to the trails. Okay, so we finally made it to the more woodsy area. We're about five minutes from the road still. So we haven't made it very far, but we're getting there. Slowly but surely, we finally make it to our adventure spot. Who were these intellectuals who helped shape the future of ideas? 
First, Plato was a philosopher from ancient Greece. He questioned the very essence of human existence. Adam Smith was a quasi-economist, quasi-philosopher from the Scottish Enlightenment, where his main school of thought was that economies grow and change, and that there's a force called the invisible hand, which helps regulate and control markets and economies. Even though the two men lived in differing times with differing social structures, they each had very strong views on labor and how labor can be used as a tool to help people build wealth or to cause more segregation amongst different types and classes of workers. When it came to the division of labor, each great thinker had a different view on what it meant to be a laborer and what it meant to contribute to society. Plato did not specifically delve into the idea of the division of labor in terms of economic productivity but he did advocate for a structured society where individuals were assigned different roles and tasks based on their talent and abilities to help maintain hierarchical structure within society. Adam Smith, on the other hand, heavily discussed the division of labor and its impact on economic efficiency. He believed that by dividing work and tasks, allowed for individuals to learn and focus on one specific set of skills, increasing productivity gains and economic output. Adam Smith argued that greater diversification and specialization of labor is what helps individuals grow their human capital and overall lead to greater and stronger economy. So here's base camp. I think this is probably will stay for the next couple of days, months, years. Who knows how long it'll take for someone to come rescue me. Pretty sure I've been lost for the last 16 minutes. Anyway, let's start building shelter before it turns to night. Pikmin is a fun real-time strategy game, as I explained before. For those who are unfamiliar with it, here's a quick overview. In Pikmin, you mainly take the control of Captain Olimar, an astronaut stranded on this mysterious planet. He must survive and find a way home, but to do so, Olimar finds these adorable little creatures named Pikmin which he named after the Pick Pick Carrots from his home planet Hokote. Each of these Pikmin have varying abilities, and with those abilities, Captain Olimar navigates the terrain and finds all the pieces to his and finds all the pieces to his recently crash-landed SS Dolphin to help him get back to planet Hokotate. The core gameplay loop of Pikmin revolves around commanding and utilizing these Pikmin for various tasks. Captain Olimar will explore diverse environments such as caves, forest, water areas, beaches, in search of resources and solutions in search of resources and solutions, and to better understand the, the landscape of the world in which he has landed. Along the way, Captain Olimar encounters obstacles, enemies, and puzzles that require him to carefully utilize his Pikmin and their various abilities. The core objectives of the game intertwine with the division specialization of labor. As Captain Olimar advances, he encounters different tasks that require different types of Pikmin. This creates a need for strategical planning and delegation, assigning the right Pikmin for the right job. By capitalizing on each Pikmin's unique strengths, Captain Olimar can optimize his efficiency and overcome the obstacles more effectively. Additionally, Captain Olimar must manage his resources wisely, collecting and utilizing objects found throughout the game world such as fruit and ship parts for survival. Captain Olimar must also balance his exploration of the new planet, gathering resources, managing Pikmin, and other things to ensure that he can leave this strange planet. The core gameplay loop of Pikmin provides a rewarding and immersive experience and helps us, the player, understand the division and specialization of labor by commanding different Pikmin types. Well, I think I'm officially lost. Luckily, I brought my Nintendo Switch with me, but I don't have any games, so hopefully I can be entertained when it comes for a little bit. No, I really need to go find some games. Maybe there's some out here in the wild. I'll take miracles big and small. And after walking around for a few seconds, I found them. But it's gonna be a hard decision. I don't have much energy and I can only take one back. Do I take back this economics textbook? Or this copy of Pikmin 3 Deluxe? I think this is the one I need. But I think I can try to take both. And what would Pikmin be without the Pikmin? And there are different type of Pikmin types. In every game we have our red Pikmin. These are fiery quintessential Pikmin warriors. With their red bodies and pointy noses, they're known for their incredible strength and resistance to fire. Whether it's battling enemies or breaking down barriers, red Pikmin are a great choice. Yellow Pikmin are little daredevils with big ears and bold personalities. What makes them special is their ability to be thrown higher in the air, reaching elevated platforms and objects. 
Not only that, they're also immune to electrical hazards, so they can handle any electric type enemy and electric barriers that you might come across. Yellow Pikmin can carry bombs, so that's pretty neat. Blue Pikmin have gill-like structures on their bodies, and that helps them navigate aquatic areas. The primary talent of Blue Pikmin is swimming, which comes in handy when they're crossing bodies of water exploring submerged areas. When others might hesitate, Blue Pikmin dive right into a splash. But don't worry, they'll always come back up for air. Rock Pikmin are also another great Pikmin type. They're sturdy and tough, and they're known for their solid bodies, and because they're rocks, their rocky exterior. When tossed, they can shatter crystal objects and deal massive damage to enemies. They're like tiny wrecking balls with a heart of stone. Just be careful not to trip on them, as they're a bit, well, rocky to walk on. We also have Winged Pikmin with their delicate wings and charming expressions. Winged Pikmin are the airborne experts. They have the incredible ability to fly above obstacles and bypass tricky terrain. These little aviators bring a touch of elegance to the team, and they always seem to have a cheerful flutter in their step. Quay Pikmin are also a curious sponge. These pint-sized wonders stand out with their pale bodies and distinctive red eyes. White Pikmin have a few unique abilities that set them apart from the others. First, they're immune to poison, allowing them to traverse poisonous environments unharmed. Second, they possess incredible speed and agility, making them ideal for swift maneuvering and exploration. Additionally, White Pikmin have a mischievous side, as they sometimes dig up buried treasure or unearthed hidden items, adding an element of surprise to their contributions. Just be careful not to lose sight of them, as their small size can make them hard to spot. On the exact opposite size scale, we have Purple Pikmin. These jolly and plump Pikmin are known for their hefty weight and incredible strength. These rotund characters pack a serious punch, dealing more damage to enemies and carrying heavier objects than any other Pikmin type. Their hefty bodies also make them resistant to wind, preventing them from being easily blown away. However, their large size means they're a bit slower and less agile than other Pikmin. Despite their slow waddle, they always manage to bring a smile to the team with their endearing charm and unwavering determination. And so far in Pikmin 4, we know of two new Pikmin types. Ice Pikmin, they look like a combination of the purple Pikmin, but just wrapped in round in an icy coating. And I'm really excited to try these little fellows out, just because they have the ability to freeze enemies and water. Hopefully that means that we can navigate across ice a little bit easier with our entire Pikmin army. We also have Glow Pikmin, and I'm really excited to use these, just because these Pikmin allow us to explore during night, during night expeditions. Glow Pikmin have bright green eyes and, and luminescent bodies. And instead of having legs, they have a ghost-like tail. Because they don't have legs, they're actually floating. They have blue eyes even though one pupil is a little bit lighter than the other. The flowers are also a slightly different shape with pointed petals instead of the normal round ones. And they appear to be smaller than other Pikmin types. With my treasure with me, I think it's time I pick this game and pop it in and see what it's all about. Not bad, but I wonder what this textbook's all about. Principles of Economics. Oh, that's awkward. Hmm. There's got to be something in here that can help me figure out what Pikmin's all about. Oh, look at this. The Specialization and Diversification of Labor. Should look into that a little bit more. And throughout this journey, what have we learned so far? There are different Pikmin types each with their own strengths and abilities, weaknesses, and setbacks. But if there's anything that Adam Smith and Plato taught us, is that this could be a good thing. Not only for the Pikmin and not only for Captain Olimar, for, for the entire planet where the Pikmin reside as a whole. Each different Pikmin type with its strengths can help Captain Olimar overcome his struggles. They can help other Pikmin overcome their challenges when trying to gather more resources for the Onion. In addition, each Pikmin type, in addition for the core gameplay loop, each Pikmin type provides a new way of... What have we learned so far? In the Pikmin universe, Captain Olimar is tasked with leading a colorful army of Pikmin, each possessing their own extraordinary talents and adorable quirks. It's like managing a wild team building retreat in the Botanical Wonderland. As we journey with Captain Olimar through lush environments, we encounter a variety of challenges that are that requires strategical thinking of our Pikmin army. Just like in real life the vision of labor, we must tap into each person's unique strengths and weaknesses. Not only to maximize efficiency, but so that we each feel like we're getting the job done, and that we're contributing to the well-being of one another. 
As Captain Olimar strategically assigns each Pikmin type to different tasks based on their unique abilities, he witnesses the magic of division and specialization of labor unfold before his eyes. Each Pikmin type contributes their unique talents, bringing Captain Olimar closer to returning back home, while providing endless entertainment and laughter all along the way. And Smith and Plato would have been thrilled to see Pikmin's embodiment of their ideas. From Smith's belief in maximizing productivity through specialization, to Plato's vision of individuals fulfilling specific roles, Pikmin demonstrates the benefits of the division and specialization of labor with whimsy and charm. So rally your leafy troops, embrace the laughter and revel in Pikmin's fantastic display of division and specialization of labor. It's a journey that combines strategic gameplay, adorable antics, and a healthy dose of amusement. Let's rejoice in the wonders of Pikmin and the joy of turning labor into a playful adventure. Now that my Pikmin 1, Pikmin 2, and Pikmin 3 deluxe journeys are over, all I have to do is wait for Pikmin 4 and I think I can finally get out of here. Luckily I have this book, Principles of Economics, to keep me busy. I wonder what else is in here. Oh look! It's a picture of me. Huh. I think I'm ready to make my strides back to the real world. So there's only one issue. Pikmin 4 still hasn't come out, so I think I need to be out here until that happens. It's a good thing I brought my emergency off. Hopefully that lasts me another couple of weeks. I feel like I learned a lot today. Is anything useful? Not really, but I'm not an econ major, so yeah. We'll just throw it out for now.